we have this big saying now in my field that's called empowering people. Mm -hmm. And it makes me crazy. It's why I named the book Powerful. It's like the reason we have to empower everybody is because we took it all away. And so, you know, you walk in the door with power, and if we recognize that about the people that we work with, then we're going to quit doing a bunch of crazy stuff that we do that doesn't matter. Like what? Uh, like annual performance reviews. And then everybody talks about how difficult it is to give hard feedback to people. And I say, is there anything else you do in your life once a year that you're good at? Right? So, um, you know, if we give people regular feedback and we talk about how it's working out and we're honest about what work is for people, then I think we all have a better opportunity to get stuff done. And that's the type of approach that I would think would work very well in a startup company, maybe in Silicon Valley, where, you know, they need something brought in but not a huge company i don't know that it works in huge companies tell me why you know i don't i don't know that it doesn't work in huge companies because yeah. huge companies don't try okay so um when i talk to huge companies i say look i'm okay if you go back and you choose to operate the way you always have and do things because that's the way everybody else does it but choose it and so at this point, we've got management practices that we all do. And because we all do it, we call it best practices, even though we don't measure it. <laughs> so I just think that we can ap ap apply an innovator's approach to the way we manage people, too. That's it's, what I learned. It's, it's, it sounds good, except that, you know, I, I don't necessarily, I mean, managers have the opportunity every day to do that above and beyond yeah, a performance do. review. Mm -hmm. And it may or may not happen. So they're not acting as adults either. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's two people in this party, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, the, on this transaction. Yeah. So how do you get There's a lot of people in that party. How do you get managers to it's act a, like an adult? You know, it's about discipline rather than process. So if you have a discipline that a manager meets with an employee on a regular basis, then you can make every third or fourth meeting about performance. And it should go both ways. I mean, that's the, the other part in the the example you just gave is the manager is supposed to be the adult and the subordinate is supposed to be the child. Come on, you know, every single person who goes to work every day is an adult. They have adult responsibilities. So if we both act like that, then the power dynamic shifts. You know, one, one thing that strikes me, when I think about places where it's fallen down, where you don't get that kind of feedback, a lot of times it's because people are just so busy keeping up with the daily expectations yep. that they don't have time to do these longer in-depth processes. I mean, that, that, it, it, it's asking a lot when people are really producing a lot every day. Yeah, and I'm not talking about a longer in-depth process at all. <laughs> I'm talking about a 15-minute conversation on a regular basis where you go, how am I doing? And Or I say to you as my boss, you know, you could help me out here, right? And it's a conversation that's regular and easy, like breathing. It's not this big, heavy process. Can you do that when you manage, let's say, more than 30 or 50 or 80 or 100 people? You can try, and, it's, and managing 30, 50, or 80, or 100 people is a pretty difficult task to do. Right. And so the other thing in my book I talk about is smaller teams tend to get better work done. And so part of it is the way you organize. It's a whole system that I'm talking about, which is just this idea that we're going to come to work and do great stuff and be proud of what we do before we go home. And I think that's a human drive. The, the, the deck that you wrote, the Freedom and Responsibility deck, 124 pages, Sheryl Sandberg has said is the most important document that's come out of Silicon Valley. Yeah. Did you find challenges, as Netflix got bigger and bigger, find challenges with trying to stay true to that? I didn't write it. We wrote it collaboratively over a period of 10 years. So that's another message, which is... It's that not a you, frozen you in time. Yeah, it's not frozen in time, and you don't pick up my book and go, let's do that, and we're golden, right? It's that you pay attention to how you manage people as much as you pay attention to the work that they do. Is right? that something that HR departments are responsible for? Is it something that the, With, it has to come from the top down? It's both. Yeah. It's everybody, right? I mean, if it's everybody's responsibility to have a great workplace, then it'll be a better workplace. But when it's just the job of management or it's just the job of HR, then it doesn't get done. What are some, oh, go ahead. You were at Netflix for 14 years. Yeah. So you basically were at the company when it started. Yeah. 
if you're a company that's already in existence, you've got a culture in place, how do you break that? It's much easier, isn't it, to establish that culture oh, from for the sure, start? For sure, mm -hmm. right? But, but if you're in a company that's been around for a really long time and you're nervous about, um, this is what happens when I talk to big corporations. They're nervous because the little companies are nipping at their heels, right? And so they realize they have to be more nimble. They have to be more in the moment. They have to be able to change faster. And so these big, heavy processes, it just slows you down. Right, so it's a way to, so you don't have to change everything. I say just throw away one thing that doesn't matter. And if you had to pick one thing that would be the first thing you would throw away? Probably the annual performance review. Wow, um, it's that egregious it's of a process. Too, yeah, I think it's too egregious. I think everyone hates it, and I don't think it accomplishes what it sets out to do. So in my innovative Silicon Valley world, if I said, hey, let's create a system that gives people feedback, you would never come up with that. It's dumb, yeah. right? Let's tell everybody once a year something that's vaguely related to what they do. And by the way, tell everybody at the same time so that as a manager, you are trying to spend And tie money. it to pay, right. Right? right? And so, you know, I believe in market-based pay. So that system of looking backwards is really, it just slows you down, right? You had, you had situations at Netflix where you paid somebody double because you didn't want to lose them. You doubled their salary. Mm -hmm. what, explain the theory. It wasn't that. because we didn't want to lose them. Mm -hmm. It was because they had a particular skill that was really important to getting great stuff done for us at the time, right? And hardly anybody gets double their salary over and over and over again. It's a matter of supply and demand. So it, may, it was a person that had been with us, what I thought in my HR mind was a relatively short time, but had a very specific skill that was very rare and so I realized that it wasn't that I was paying him twice as much to keep him it was that oh my god he's worth twice as much right. to the five other companies that needed his particular skill so that's where those broad brush you know this is your job your pay grade this is what everybody else makes I'm not sure if that's completely true anymore Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.